fall down seven times, but always get up eight. Do you have a dream you're trying to pursue? It's in your way. Why haven't you moved forward? Like you, I also have a dream that I've pursued and I continue to dream, all while being a woman and living with bipolar disorder. We all have an obstacle we must overcome. Maybe you just lost a job or are going to a, through a divorce or just lost a loved one. We need to always remember there is light at the end of the tunnel. According to National Alliance, a mental illness, 20% of people live with one. Look around. One out of every five of you might be battling PTSD, depression, or another form of distress. I'm part of that 20%. My journey begins back in California on a weekend cruise with my friend to celebrate my high school graduation. Uncharacteristically, I had enormous amounts of energy. I felt invincible. My mind raced a million miles a minute. In the disco one night, I spotted a handsome young man. Hey, babe, I'm going to teach you how to dance. Up on a table, I jumped, margarita in hand. But you see, there's a problem. I am no Paula Abdul. My temper flared. My moods were all over the place. My friend was so horrified, she avoided me the rest of the weekend. People thought I was on drugs. I had no clue what was happening. But when I returned from the cruise that weekend, my parents knew exactly what was going on. I had a symptom of a mental illness. I have bipolar disorder. It's a mood disorder. It's a chemical imbalance in the brain which causes euphoric highs known as manias, and devastating lows, to the point of suicide. Bipolar disorder is genetic. My uncle suffers from it, and my grandmother suffered mental breakdowns and depressions. Oftentimes in mania, it requires hospitalization, but my mother, a nurse, was able to find a psychiatrist who agreed to treat me as long as my parents monitored my medication. There's something you need to know about my family. We're Catholics. My parents prayed to God for my safety and their sanity. They were so concerned that while both of my parents were working at the time, my father stayed home to take care of me. Slowly, with time and medication, the mania ended. What was my dream? I dreamed of being an elementary school teacher, so I enrolled in a junior college. After one semester, my father came to me and said, Susan Armin, pack your bags. I have a dream job opportunity. We're moving to Iowa. Iowa? I don't think so, because like, I'm a California girl. December. I tearfully boarded a plane to Iowa. I landed in a cold and winter darkness, and it mirrored my life. I lashed out at my parents, I hate you for moving me here. I hate my life, and I'm so mad at God. I then connected to a psychiatrist who continued me on lithium. At that point, I enrolled in a junior college and transferred to a university. But there was a big problem at the university my GPA wasn't high enough to enter the teaching program. So I transferred to one more university. I changed colleges more times than a woman who changes clothes before going on a date. To meet people, I tried out for and made the soccer team. My doctor told me I could play, but if I felt chest pains, I had to stop playing. There's something you need to know about people who have bipolar disorder and experience mania. They ignore all advice. While playing soccer one day, I did feel the chest pains, but I did not stop playing. Later, I learned that the chest pains meant I could have had a massive heart attack. Mania almost killed me. Finally, I transferred to, to Drake University. 
After testing proved positive that I had a learning disability, the university allowed me a note taker and extended amounts of time on my tests. For me, having bipolar disorder makes learning feel impossible. I would study facts, nothing would stick. I would go to write papers, they were completely unorganized. Like the North Star, my psychi psychologist was there throughout any crisis. One day, I confided in her my struggle in school. Why do I have to have bipolar disorder? Susie, she said. What do you call a doctor at the bottom of his graduating class? I don't know. A doctor. Keep going. And one day, you'll do cartwheels across the graduation stage. Fine. Her faith renewed my hope. She recommended I join Bible study. God's word gave me strength and hope, and it reaffirmed my faith. I'll never forget this moment. I was literally lying on the floor of my parents' living room, saying, I'm done with college. I can't do this anymore. I give up. But then I'd remember my dream holding you back, standing in your way. I haven't you move forward. CNN Health reports one half of college students who live with bipolar disorder drop out. After two years of working hard and praying harder, I graduated with a BA in sociology. Now, I had a lot of help from friends, family members, doctors, and professors. My graduation was a huge accomplishment. I had beaten the odds. Now, this wasn't the teaching degree that I had dreamed of, but my wise therapist knew the stress of being a teacher would break me. She recommended other school positions. I took a job working in an elementary school with a girl who had cerebral palsy. I'll never forget the Iowa winter. I was so depressed, I couldn't get out of the bed. I cried all the time. All hope was gone. Called out constantly, sick from work. I was put on antidepressants, and they didn't help, not one bit. I had a chance to move to Virginia and live with my aunt. I moved to Virginia and took a job working as a kindergarten assistant. I met a charming young man, and I was happy. My first psychiatrist in Virginia needed a psychiatrist. When I needed a refill on the medication, he was nowhere to be found. Without the proper medication, I was an emotional basket case. My boyfriend began to verbally abuse me. At that point, I connected to a psychiatrist, but in mania, was too sick to tell him I had bipolar disorder. Instead, I told him it was just anxiety. So he began to treat me for anxiety. Meanwhile, the bipolar disorder spun out of control. I was so sick, I couldn't work. It just was too much. Dying felt easier than living. One night in mixed mania, I called my parents, please, Come get me. I can't live like this anymore. The parents that gave me life did so once again. They moved me to Las Vegas, where we now all currently live. My first trip to the psychiatrist, I was a hot mess. I was so sick. I couldn't even fill out my own name on the paperwork. My mom had to come and advocate for me. 
You see, I had lost 25 pounds on the anti-anxiety medication. I was a skeleton. The psychiatrist said the next few months were going to be rough. I would have to transition off the anti-anxiety medication, go on the proper medication for bipolar disorder. That was the biggest understatement of my life. At night, I had images of me cutting myself. My own mom had to sleep in the bed with me. I was in my late 20s. My father, he reminded me of God's love for me and my faith, firmly rooted in the Catholic Church. My mom, well, she made me drink Ensure to gain back weight. By the way, it's disgusting. <laughs> After five months of darkness, the sun began to shine again for me. Hope had returned. Later, when, re when, later, when rereading my doctor's records, he never thought that I would make a full recovery. He didn't know me, and he didn't know the healing power of God. Unfortunately for me, there is no cure for bipolar disorder. I take a lot of drugs. Okay, let me explain. They're all legal. I surrender to them daily, needing them, like the oxygen we need to breathe. They keep me in full remission, well, sort of. Except when giving one of these talks, you try it. What about my dream? For the past 13 years, I've assisted special education students and supported teachers in the classroom. Man, I picked an exhausting job. But I can't think of anything more fulfilling. What about my love life? Okay, I admit it. I had a deplorable track record. Susie, said my mom, try meeting a man on the Catholic website. I never thought I would meet a man there, but one last try for mom. I began emailing with a man from church. Our first date was on Valentine's Day. When I got into the truck, there was a little white bear waiting for me. We went hiking at Red Rock Canyon and got lost. I knew right away he was the one. God had finally heard my cries and answered my prayers. It was Gary that took away the past pain, heartache, and disappointment and replaced him with the love so unconditional. I never dreamed possible. When a spouse has bipolar disorder, 90% of marriages and in divorce. We've been married 13 and a half years, and we beat the odds each and every day. No family should have to suffer like mine. Our persistent hope for a better future and belief that God would provide it has anchored and sustained us throughout all these years. Later, when reliving my private hell and writing my book, I could clearly see the hands of God, guiding me and giving me a wonderful future. I'm the face of bipolar disorder. It's me. Maybe it's you. Bipolar disorder touches every race, religion, class, and country. I am made in the image and likeness of God, so I have no shame as a woman who lives with a mental illness. My faith keeps me anchored. What about you? Is it a friend? A family member or maybe a beloved pet. I choose not to be defined by society's ignorance, but to instead stand up straight, proud, and tall and explain bipolar disorder at every opportunity. And that's why, despite these knocking knees, I hope you can't see them knocking because they are. I'm here today. Having a mental illness is not a death sentence. I'm proof that we, with mental illness, can live our dreams. If we hold fast to faith, hope, ask for help, and never, never, 
never give up. Always remember, some dreams are worth keeping. Let me ask you one last time. What's your excuse? Thank you.